Hey, it's Max, and it's the end of day two of the 30-day AI Sprint. I'm getting pretty comfortable talking to myself and a camera in public in Germany. What did I get done today? So I was mostly focused on the back-end workflow for the GitHub profile analyzer for the results page. So it's successfully using GitHub API to fetch repos and profile information. It's ingesting that into an uh, AI chain, which is outputting structured data. We're using NNN's structured output data, which means it comes out in a predictable JSON object, which are then transform a little bit and can send back to WeWeb in a structured way. Now in WeWeb, I've got that populating the results page. So it still doesn't look very good. But that's gonna be the, one of the last things that I do. I may take a stab at it tonight, but let's see bit of a cheeky night session. So the next thing I'll need to do tomorrow is add a few more sections to the GitHub results page. We only have a roast, topics, which I intend to do as tags, and a profile description. So we'll get a couple more of those. We'll make it look fancy. That's gonna be Wednesday we're working on that. And I'm gonna plan for Friday release for that because we've also got the AI newsletter that ideally I work on as well. I'm gonna prioritize getting the GitHub profile analyzer out because it could have people using it, interacting with it, and then go back to the newsletter. What you're gonna see next is a stitch together throughout the day. Here's the NADN workflow that's going to populate the GitHub profile analysis results page. It's triggered by WeWeb here, and I'm using the pin data feature once I've gotten the payload from WeWeb, which is great because I can click the edit button here and change something, for example, the profile handle that I'm checking if I need a different case to test my workflow. Up here, we use an HTTP request route and the GitHub API to fetch a user. We're gonna update that. So it dynamically fetches this user. Great. And so if I run this, we see it's outputting information on the user. What I do next is I have an edit fields node where I create some new key values uh, for the item to clean it up because we want uh, just the relevant information to pipe into my AIs for summarizing that sort of thing. We do the same thing for getting the last 40 styled repos. What happens is NAN outputs this as NAN items. So we have an array of objects in here. Each one of these is a repo. I then again, strip that down, same reason. So we run this, we see for each one, we've got uh, a smaller item and then I aggregate that so that we have one edit and item. So it's a repos array of 40 items. And now what I'm testing is to summarize that. So we have nice, concise text to pipe into a classification AI step. And what I'm testing now is whether it's better to pipe in 40 items that get summarized and then aggregate those after the AI step or to aggregate first and then into the AI step. A few moments later. I'm trying to decide whether I want to first aggregate my items of repos and then summarize, or just summarize each item individually and then aggregate later. So what I did is I have one version of that. I duplicated that. And then from here, I just connected two output branches. It's sending the same data. I added in this limit node, um, which is very simple. I can just add how many items to limit. So 40 items coming in, only five coming out. And then both of these ran. And what I can do is in here, I can see that this took 2,600 milliseconds, so 2.6 seconds. And in here, I can see that this took almost half that time. So now I can compare the answers and see which one I want to go for, but it's a really nice, quick way to benchmark. This is a great example how I can use NNN quickly, not some other dedicated tool to, to quickly compare those different options available to me. I could do the same with different models, right? Duplicate this out, couple, run against three different models and you know, quickly inspect and see which one's the best model in terms of efficiency, but then also qualitative and compare the different answers. More moments later. There were a few snafus in getting sort of structured output data. And one of the crux of that was I was getting confused why there's an output parent object wrapping my expected output. So what I'm doing here, I have a basic LLM chain. And in most of these NNN chain nodes that we have, we can require specific output, which adds this output parser branch here. And with the output parser, there's a few different ones I can use, like the structured output parser. That's what I'm using here. And what that does is I can either 
just specify the example of how I'd like it to look, the output from the node, or use JSON schema, which you can define data types and whatnot. But even with just them doing a example, I've got some context in the answers outputted here, and that does help. I was testing if I just provide lorem ipsum versus something like a, a real value. I do recommend real values. And so what we have so far is we are aggregating prior to uh, outputting that is faster than running 50 separate calls. And there was no benefit really to that that I could see. I'm using the Anthropic model for now. We can test that with OpenAI as well later. One thing I love about NNN is, you know, I was trying a few different things. This still in my workflow here. I haven't pushed off to the side. Obviously, we'll clean it up, but it feels like I've got more my Lego uh, set up. Anyways, in the prompt itself, we can see I'm saying return the following insights based on the GitHub repos that I follow. Each one of these here links up to each one of these in here. And I was rather surprised that it's working really nicely. And I run it, you know, a bunch of times and it's giving me expected response. Um, and then in the system message, what I'm experimenting with now, I was doing a version of this in the, in ChatGPT. Uh, specifically, I use ChatGPT to uh, generate an example uh, of the roast in um, my output. So I have a good, again, relevant example. That worked great. I had done some prompting in here. Like you were a hilarious comic, you have a background in software engineering, you understand things like hacking news and Reddit humor. So I'm now in this LM chain experimenting with these, these chat messages where you can add system messages, user messages, AI messages to um, get a better response. I'm not an expert on these system messages, so I'm just popping this in here and seeing if it improves the result. It seems to right now, but this is something I might come back to as we're optimizing, perhaps post-launch, and understand how we can optimize this even further. But so far, I've got topics, which we can sort of have some output to tags, projects I like to follow. This could be the base of one of the cards that we generate in the results and the user roast. So what I do next is we've got the user profile because this information is only coming from the repos they follow, which I think is a great data source. But I'm also now going to add a merge node. And what the merge node will do is we'll combine, this is the user profile details. We'll combine the user profile details with the repos they follow. And in the merge node, what's nice is we could add more inputs. So if we get a third data stream, we can combine that all, pipe it into here. So as the project evolves, we can add even more data sources and then it'll sort of list in here. We might need to update how we, we paste it in basically into this node, but then we have a, a strategy for getting multiple of these different data into this LM chain to see if we get some better results. A few minutes later. Now we have the user profile data and the repo data being merged together in the merge node. So we're doing a combined operation and doing it by position because we each just have one item coming in and we just want one item coming out with the profile information and then the repos array that we made. I was also in testing this, it was working fine with 40 items, 40 repos. So I've increased that to the 50 latest repos just as it seemed we haven't hit any context limits yet. And then in the LLM chain step itself, we have in the system message, we've also added a little bit of guidance um, on the specific output on how we'd like to have it a little bit better, modify it a little bit. I was referencing the output key name that I'm using in my structured output parser. Anthropic at least did seem to listen to that and improve the result there. I'm using Core 3.5. Uh, for this. And yeah, so we have uh, everything being outputted here. And so the next step in the respond to webhook node, we respond with JSON because we just want to construct the response to send back to WeWeb. And in the response body, it's rather simple. We have the topics, the project summary, and the profile roast all being outputted here. Everything was drag and dropped. For the topic specifically, what I had to do, I'll redo it quickly here, is I drag and drop the parent um, array. And then in here, we don't have in the right structure. So we can period, it opens autocomplete, and we can use the two JSON string function here, which then gets in the right format. So now I'm gonna, in WeWeb, hook up the results page to show these three bits of information. And once that's working, come back. And for the rest of the day, see how much more information we can add in here and leave probably WeWeb styling either to a sneaky session tonight 
or to tomorrow morning. So that's a wrap for day two. I'll see you tomorrow for day three of the 30-day AI Sprint.